ready? All right. All right. Hello. You guys made it to the last session. Congratulations. Everybody, give yourself a pat on the back. Go ahead. And, and clap, too. That's cool. All right. Uh, so this is the Build Your Own YouTube video player session. It's kind of a long title. Uh, I used to call this session Extending and Mashing Up YouTube also, so there's going to be a little bit of that. Uh, my name is Jeff Stearns. I'm an engineer on the YouTube syndication team. Uh, our team handles a lot of stuff like uh, playing YouTube not on the YouTube site. So our team handles the GData API, uh, which supports things like the iPhone and the Apple TV. Uh, we also uh, do the mobile site. And then me personally, I work on the video players mostly uh, for the embedded players. So you'll see like uh, embedded players if you see them on MySpace or Facebook or on blogs. Um, uh, and also custom players uh, that you can customize, which I'll talk a little bit about. And then also uh, these other video unit players. Uh, if you guys want to follow along to this presentation, there's this tiny URL link right here, which is to this actual presentation right here that you're looking at. Um, you guys can follow along, or you can save it for later and check it out. Uh, this talk, I think, will also be on YouTube in about a week, if you guys come back and look for it. Um, does anybody here not know what YouTube is? All right. Um, we'll just skip this one. Up. Um, no. So really quick, YouTube, you guys already know. You watch videos, you comment and stuff. Um, what most people don't know about is our syndication options, I think, for customizing the players. Uh, these are all pretty new. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot. I'm, I'm going to give you guys an awareness test really quick because it's the end of the day and we've got to make sure that you're awake. This is an awareness test. All right, so everybody pay attention. I'm going to quiz you on this. Thing. How many passes does the team in white make? Did you guys see the bear that was moonwalking? <laughs> no? Nobody saw it? All right, the yeah. answer I'll is 13. Well. Pat yourself on the back again. Congratulations. But did you see the moonwalking bear? So anyway, the video is actually to make, you know, pay attention to bicyclists and don't run out for them, all right? Which you guys should do. You're in a good city for that. Um, and just to prove that it actually is there in the first part, you can go back and here's the bear. It's not like a trick or anything. All right. <laughs> all right. Continuing on. Sorry about that. We'll, we'll, we'll go back here. All right. So uh, a quick overview of the normal YouTube embedded player. This, this talk, we have a couple of embedded players. Let me actually go back. So. So the syndication ops that we have are a normal embedded player, which is probably what you are all familiar with. Uh, if you just go around and you're looking at, uh, you know, blogs like Boing Boing or whatever, they post them a lot. Uh, you know, even TechCrunch or whatever, you know, all the, all the popular blogs and stuff. Uh, so you're pretty, probably pretty familiar with the embedded player. Um, and then we also have custom players, which allow you to embed, like, a whole playlist. Uh, with the embedded player, you can only pick a single video, and then you have the option of having related videos show up with that or not. So you can just have the one video. Uh, the custom players allow you to embed a whole playlist if you want. Uh, or things like your, I believe you can do your favorite videos or uh, just all of your videos show up in a player. So it's all in one nice player with a playlist. Um, and then we have the new Chromos player, uh, which is just the video thing. No controls and you can build your own. And that's what this talk is going to get into a little bit later uh, for the bulk of it. Um, so an overview of the embedded player. Uh, we now allow you to customize the colors and the size and other options of it. A lot of people don't know this. Um, but you can actually have quite a bit of optional parameters, which are all of these here. Uh, and if you want to save this link here, let me show you the address bar so you guys see where I'm at. So here's the URL here. It's on the code.google.com site. And you can come here and look at all these different parameters. And we have the parameter and then the explanation for what it does. Uh, really cool stuff. So you can have it autoplay, which some people use. I think if you go watch a video on dig, it'll autoplay, uh, which is a nice feature so you don't have to click play. Um, they have keyboard controls for the players now, so you can pause it and play it using the keyboard, uh, using the space bar. And that's actually uh, on the live site now, too, as of yesterday. Um, 
We have a border option, which you can turn the border on and off, and then we have some color options. And to make this a little bit easier on people, we allowed, we added this little customize box. Oops, my browser seems to be screwed up. I'll use this one. So when you go to a video here, you can actually click on customize on the YouTube site uh, and then pick all your options. So you can say include the related videos, don't include the related videos. You can actually pick which color you want the player to be. Oops, not sure why that jumped down. Anyway, you can see that changing and then when I change the border, you can see the border show up. This is just a little preview. Uh, so then when you grab this embed code and put it on your site, that's what the player looks like. Now we don't uh, offer sizing options here, but you can actually put in any, any width and any height that you want and the player will scale to fit whatever size you give it. Um, so that's something else that I'd like to see people do more of, I guess. Um, let's see. So that's pretty good for that. I will uh, go back to here. Now another really cool thing is we recently added, I think back in March we launched this, uh, or maybe it was April. Uh, we launched a JavaScript API and a Flash API for the embedded player. So now you can actually load the embedded player on your site, enable the JavaScript API, and then you can control things like play, pause, uh, seeking. Uh, you can control the volume. You can mute the player all using JavaScript from outside the player. So this is, enables great interaction with the player, and I'll show some examples there. Uh, and then we also enabled all of these things through a Flash API too. So you can load the player, the embedded player, or the Chromos player into your Flash application and control it using these action script calls. Uh, which are the same as the JavaScript API. So I have a few examples that sort of illustrate what you can do with that. Uh, so here's an example, just a few different players. Oops, let me reload this. Just a few different player options, and you can see the different customizations. Like I have a blue one with a border, uh, a red one with no border, and then down here I have a black one because you can put, you can actually put any color you want, not just the pre-chosen ones. Here's just a hex value in the in the parameter. Uh, so here's an example of the black one here. This is actually a pretty funny video. It's like a nature video about sharks, I think. Oh, they took it down. <laughs> All right, always check your videos before you come to a talk. I'll show you this one instead. This one's pretty neat. Let's just turn the volume on. So this one, suddenly, the car took it down. I took the car. Oh, 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 These are people with way too much time on their hands. All right, we'll stop that. We don't have to watch the rest of it. All right, so that's that. Here's, an, here's another example of using the JavaScript API. Uh, and this is, uh, I put this together just in a couple hours uh, a few weeks ago, and it uses the uh, embedded player and then the Google Maps API to synchronize uh, a video with a map. So it's actually, let's see if this will load here. I got 12 whole digs. You can tell it was really cool, right? It's on the wired one. Well, I guess I could go take the dig thing out. I guess we could skip this. You know what? We'll skip this for now. I'll come back to that one in a little bit and see what happens. Um, Here's another one that also uses the JavaScript API. Uh, and this one is a sort of like a transcript thing for some debate. So they had these, uh, this Republican debate here. Of course the internet decides to stop working right in the middle of the talk. All right.
right. Maybe. We'll come back to that one too. Next one. Let's try this one. All right. So this one, some guy came up to me today and said, hey, I made this thing. And I actually preloaded this one so I can show it to you. So this one is another example of the JavaScript API. And this guy made this into a jQuery plug just last night. I forget his name. Michael something. Gary. There he is. He's right there in the audience. You can thank him later. So this is really cool. What this does is it has a bunch of segments of this video. And as you play the video, it That's actually synchronizes it. He wrote a function for the Maplets API back when he was working for zevents.com. He wrote a function. It synchronizes it with this window over on the side. So I can actually jump around this video. And you can see it's actually jumping to a different spot. And then we have different sort of presentation frames loading here. And this is like HTML. Uh, it might be slides or something else you could synchronize there. But this was really interesting. This is New Hampshire. It was the next primary after Iowa. Very, so you can very see it's a nice synchronization of the, uh, the presentation the, video with the, you know, other content. So that's really quick. And obviously, you can tell uh, the video is not the best quality there. So you can, it's really hard to see the really fine details of the map. And you can even, I believe, come over here and play with these controls like this, but, you know, it's be as you're watching the video. They don't vote county by county, as you can so I can like drag this around as I'm watching and look closer. So this was really cool. And you can see as the video plays, it'll actually synchronize this and go and update it. And the map it. All right. So that is the JavaScript API. Let's check. Is this working yet? No. All right. We'll skip that until later. All right. So uh, the next cool thing that we have, and this is sort of what I really want to talk about today, is the Chromos player. Uh, the Chromos player is a totally bare bones player. There's no controls. There's nothing. There's nothing there except for JavaScript and a Flash API. Um, and it's there for for the taking to do what you like with it. So, here's what it looks like. You guys ready? Hold your applause. Ta-da! All right. Let's see what we can actually do with this thing. So here's a couple of examples that I'll show first before we dig into actually doing some code and, and looking at how to build it. So this one is the JWFLD player, which is a pretty popular open source player. Uh, you Probably a very good chance you've seen this on other video sites around the internet. And a lot of other people will just randomly use this because it's uh, he's got really cheap license, I think, to license it for commercial use. And I think it's free for you know personal non-commercial non stuff. Um, and he took this and added the Chromos player functionality to it, so you can now play YouTube videos through this player. Um, so if I play this, you can see. So I should say the YouTube watermark is is one of the only visible things on it. That one, and then our loading spinner, and then the play button. Man, I'm not having good luck with the presentation gods today. None of this stuff is loading. Let me switch over. Let me switch over to the wireless here. With this one? I actually just watched it right before the talk. It's a really good video. I really want you guys to see it. Safari. All right, let's go back to this one and see. Whoops.
do apologize. Uh, why is this not working? See, this seems fine. Maybe it's just my examples. OK. So we already did that one. That one still doesn't work. All right. Let's try. We already did that one. Let's do the next one. Okay, sorry, no demos today. Let's do the next one. All right, so this company, Slide, uses the Chromos player to build their own controls and lets you sort of skin it and look however you, look how you, ever, bleh, makes it look however you want. All right, so here's another example. The play button and the YouTube logo are a little big. Uh, I think they're actually setting the X scale and the Y scale on the player, or the width and the height, instead of calling this uh, the set size method built in. So normally they're not that big, but here it looks a little funky. Uh, and you can actually pick what kind of skin you want. So like here's like super bling bling. And then I think you can save this. Let's skip the sign up. Yes, I'm sure. And now I can come and I can play this video in this own custom player. And this is using their, their controls. And I believe they loaded into a little Swift, and then that's what their controls are in, and then it loads the Chromos player in the... Chromos player does that. Oh, interesting. There was an error. Somebody must have taken that video down. Anyway, you get the idea. We'll skip that one. Here's another example uh, of another guy that's done custom video controls for the Chromos player. And this is, I believe, another Flash app where he has a Flash uh, or like an AS2 Swift here and he loads in the Chromos player and then plays stuff. So. Uh, what he did here is you can actually pick a YouTube user, a YouTube user channel. So in this case, he picked Big Cat Rescue, and then it loads this player, and it seems to be kind of slow. Well, it's thinking about it. You know what? Whoops. Last chance. All right, so here's another site which uses two Chromos players. And this guy had the idea, I actually used to work with this guy, and he had the idea that there's a bunch of people on YouTube that take uh, old 45 records and just have a video of them playing. And they put it on YouTube, so it's basically the song with the record playing. Uh, and then you can actually play it through here. And what it does is it plays one video, and then when the next, when this one ends, it goes and plays this other one, and then loads a new video on one side. So it's kind of like a turntable type of thing almost. Uh, so it'll just play music all day long. It's kind of cool. I don't know why videos aren't playing though. Well, I guess we'll skip that. Let's. Uh So let's look at a demo here. Let me go back to uh, So what I want to do with this demo sort of is actually build this uh, in front of you guys and actually do some live demo coding, which we'll see how that goes, considering nothing is playing, uh, and, and sort of add some controls to this. So here's my video player. And right now, it's just a blank page, basically. I have sort of the bare minimum it takes to get this thing loaded, uh, to have the player loaded and then ready to take commands. So to look at the HTML, is this big enough for everybody? Can you guys see that? All right, so it, it's just a normal HTML page. Uh, I have this Swift object JavaScript thing embedded here, and that allows me to do flash player detection and then embed the Swift on the page. That's the Chromos player. 
there's more information about that on the code.google.com site under the, uh, under the Chromos player section if you guys want to read about that. Uh, I have a little bit of JavaScript here, which is just a single function called on YouTube player ready, and this is what the player calls when it loads on the page and it t lets the page know that it's available and ready to go. Um, here I have a div and I called it YT API, pl YT API player. Uh, and I have a little error message here saying that you need Flash Player 8 or higher and JavaScript enabled to view the video. So uh, the JavaScript interface requires Flash 8 because it uses the Flash Player's external interface stuff that's built into it. So Flash Player 8 or higher is required to use that. Uh, the YouTube players will play videos as far back as Flash Player 7. Um, but it's better if you have 8 for this stuff. Uh, I believe the Flash API will work even as far back as Flash Player 7. Um, but I haven't tested that extensively. No guarantees, uh, but it may work. All right, so then I have my dev key, which to use the Chromos player, you have to have a dev key. Uh, you can go and get that from this URL here, from code.google.com slash API slash YouTube slash dashboard. Uh, and you can make, I think, a new dev key for each application you want. Uh, and then you need the player URL, which is this right here, uh, gdata.youtube.com slash API player, question mark, key equals, and then you use your API key. Uh, and that will load it. And then down here, I'm adding an extra argument onto the URL called enable JS API, and that tells the player that I want it to make its JavaScript API available. If you don't set this, then you won't be able to make the JavaScript calls into the player and control it. Um, the rest of the stuff here, I have an allow script access parameter set, which allows me to take my JavaScript that lives on one domain and call the Swift, which is gonna live on the YouTube domain. So that has to be there in order to make calls. Uh, and then I have a background color on the Swift, which doesn't really matter. Uh, and then other stuff, uh, the way the Swift object script works is I basically give it the URL to my Swift here. I give it the ID of a DOM uh, or of an HTML element that I want it to insert the player into, which in this case is this div up here. So what's going to happen when the page loads is the Swift or the, the Swift object says, does this user have Flash Player 8 or higher? Yes, then go ahead and embed the Swift. No, otherwise it's going to leave this alone and the user will see this error message here. Uh, so it's a nice little way to have, make sure users have the correct stuff. And then we say, give it a default size, 425 by 356, which is kind of an arbitrary size. You can size it wherever you want. Uh, and then we give it the params and the attributes, which are here and here. Um, so when the YouTube is player ready, you'll get this alert saying the player is ready. And you can see this if you reload the page. You'll see we get a little alert there that pops up and just says the player is ready. So let's add some control. So the first thing that you'll probably want to do is play a video, right? So what I'm going to do is add a function here. Uh, we'll call it load video by ID. And we're going to pass in a video ID. Uh, oh, I'm a little ahead of myself here. So, so the way that this works is uh, when Swift object embeds this object and embed tag, so, th so the, way that the way that you embed Flash content, right, is like you use an object and an embed tag, and that's how it works. So the way that Swift object works is it detects which browser you're using, and if you're using a browser that supports the object tag, it uses that, and if it doesn't, it uses the embed tag. So in this case, it'll be an embed tag, but the cool thing is that it takes whatever, uh, by default, it'll take whatever ID is on the DOM or the HTML element that you insert the Swift into and applies that to either the object or the embed tag. So in this case, the ID of my player will be YT API player. So what I want to do is I want to get a reference to that player in JavaScript so that I can then call the methods on it. So what I'm going to do is say, uh, we'll just say player. Uh, so I'm just going to do get element by ID, and that's going to be my player variable, and we'll say here. And then down here, I'm going to say player dot ID, video ID. So what this will do is whenever I call this load video by ID function, it's going to go and tell the player to load a video by ID and then pass that video ID. So now we need a way to do this in the HTML, so I'll make a really quick form here. submit button. I guess we'll give this a name here. We'll just call it video ID. 
And we have a button. We'll call that load video, I suppose. All right, so if we save this and then reload, so now we have a low add video button. We'll just fix that. Uh, and I'm also going to get rid of this alert because it'll be really annoying. And then let's hook up this button thing here. So we'll say, uh, um, well, we can just call load video. Uh, and then we can just get video ID. Right? Does that look right? That might be right. So if we reload it and then pass in some ID and hit load video, I don't think this is going to work right. I'm going to switch back to Firefox here. Hmm. actually have JavaScript errors. All right, so player is null. What's going on here? Oh, I see. So I passed in an ID here called my YC player. So that's overriding this other one. So let me replace this. Oops. Try that again. What's that? Did I spell it wrong? I'm sorry. Did I miss something? Here? Well, it should be this one, though. Let me see. Uh, interesting. Uh, it should be okay. Let me, let me in fact switch this back. And then I'll take this out. Worst presentation ever, huh? <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, that should be okay, because this is uh, getting the video ID, so that's different, right? It says something that player doesn't exist, and that should be okay, because we're doing get element by ID, YC ATI player. Let's check the DOM. All right, so we have this. Oh, look, it is my YT player. Actually, we want the embed tag, which should be the same. No, it's not. Why is this actually? All right. I'm going to uh, blame Firefox 3 on this. And we're going to try Firefox 2.
no properties. All right, we have a different error. We're making some progress here. Maybe I will just dump this and go to another one that I have. Let me see. Where's my examples? All right. I don't think it was saving. That could probably be the problem. Took that out. <laughs> Anybody have any good jokes? <laughs> There's microphones here, no, for real, not real. All right, so let's see, that's gone. Aha, that didn't save. All right, so we'll get rid of that. It's going to work this time. You just wait. All right, so we have our player. The logo shows up, we know it's ready. Let's try load video. And we have an error here, which is new. And that calls load video. All right, you know what? We're just going to forget about this. And we're going to go to here, where I happen to have a demo that already works. How about that? But then you don't get to watch me build it, which isn't quite as cool, but you know, we'll still be able to see it work since it looks like our time is running down now. All right, so. While we're here, I will show you some of these documentation pages. So if you go to the YouTube stuff under APIs, uh, you can have these player parameters here. So I think I showed you these guys, right? Uh, the JavaScript API documentation is also here. And this gives you a list of all the methods and functions you can call. Um, so we have a quick overview, some requirements, how to get started, which shows you how to use it with the embedded player. Uh, and there's a separate page for the Chromos player stuff. Um, but all of these JavaScript API things are the same for the embedded player and the Chromos player. So all the different functions you can call uh, are listed out here. We can call play video, stop video, uh, pause video, clear video, which will clear the video screen. So if you have like a video and you're playing it and then you stop it, you can actually clear the remnant of the video there. Um, you can get the bytes loaded and then get the bytes total for the video. So if you want to build your own like custom seek bar or something, you can totally do that. Um, you can mute, unmute, set the volume, get the volume. Uh, there's also a command called seek to, which allows you to seek to any second within the video. Uh, and there's also a optional parameter called allow seek ahead, which uh, if you guys are familiar with YouTube videos, you might notice that you can actually seek ahead in the video past the point that is actually downloaded, um, which is sort of like some custom server stuff that we do that allows you to sort of request the FLV from the segment that you want. So the seek to parameter actually allows you to do that. And you can tell it to either try to seek without trying to do a seek ahead. Like if you were to grab the scrubber on a seek bar and slide it back and forth, you probably don't want it to make a bunch of new requests, right? You might want to just try to seek within what's already loaded. Uh, but then when you release the seek head, maybe you want it to make a new request no matter what. Um, so if you set allow seek ahead to true, it'll allow you to uh, load a new segment of the video if that segment hasn't loaded already. Um, we also have get player state and get current time, which get player state just tells you what state the video player's in, like play, pause, buffering. Um, get current time tells you the current seconds that the video is playing. So you can set like a, maybe you want to set an interval and pull that to see what the current time of the video is. Um, we also have get duration, which tells you how long the video is once it loads. Uh, and then we have add event listener, which allows you to listen to a couple of events. Uh, the different events we have are on error and then on state change down here at the bottom. I guess I can make this a little bigger. Um, and here's all the different states that you can get so you can know when uh, somebody pauses a player or is playing it or if the player goes into a buffering mode or something. Uh, there's an error mode or an error event. 
And you can also call set size to set the video player size. Now, if you embed it into HTML and just use JavaScript, it'll actually scale to fit whatever embed size you specify. Uh, if it's in a Flash app, then it defaults to one size, and then you have to call set size if you want to change the size of the player. Um, and then the last couple things are get video URL, which returns the URL to the video on the YouTube site, uh, and then get video embed code, which gives you um, the embed code for the video. So it's just like if you were on the YouTube site and you wanted to grab the embed code and then embed that video on another site, you could grab that and give that to the users if they want it. Um, all right, so the way that this works is I showed you guys the on YouTube player ready event. So uh, I mentioned that uh, briefly, and the way that works is that when you embed the player on a page and you tell it to use the JavaScript uh, API, when the player loads and is ready to accept calls, uh, it'll call on YouTube player ready on the page and then pass it its player ID. And what you do is you actually tell it when you enable the JavaScript API, you can optionally give it a player ID, which is just a unique string, and the player will then pass that back to on YouTube player ready. And the reason for that is if you have more than one player on a page, they're all going to call the same on YouTube player ready function, and you want to be able to distinguish which player is ready and which one's not. Um, so here's some embedding examples, and let me show you the sample page. Did I show this one? I didn't show this one already. All right, so here's an example of just the normal embedded player using the JavaScript API. So I can hit play, and these are just HTML links down here, and the player will start playing. Um, oh, I muted it. And then you can also seep around in the video. So like if I want to seek for 45 seconds, I can tell it to do that. And it'll jump ahead. And you can see how I had it jump ahead in the, in the video because that segment hadn't loaded yet. And then you can see a bunch of other op options here. We have like bytes loaded, starts bytes, current time, things like that. Uh, let me go back. And my back button is gone in the browser. How does that even happen? All right. Seriously. <laughs> I'm glad you guys get a kick out of this. It's good. These lights are really hot, too, by the way. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, maybe. Um, uh, so for the Chromos player, there's a couple of extra things. Uh, there's a couple of extra unique functions to the Chromos player, and that is load video by ID uh, and queue video by ID. Uh, Load video ID allows you to just load any arbitrary video based on the video ID. Now, the video ID uh, on YouTube is pretty easy to find. Um, any video you look at, the, the video ID is just in the URL. Say my name, say my name. My first name is Marcus. Marcus is my first name. Say my other name. Say my name, say my name. All right, I apologize for that. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Uh, so you can get the video ID here. You can also get the video ID using our GData API, like if you want to pull up some, uh, maybe some, some video feeds. And I don't think that there's actually a separate, do you know if there's like a separate ID parameter? There's not. So it's actually kind of kooky in that you have to load a API response and then parse the ID out of some, out of like the URL of the video or, or something. We should probably change that since uh, people will be using this. Uh, another option is Q video by ID, which let me actually load the example page and I'll show you guys how this stuff works. Um, so here's a Chromos player demo page. Here's what I was going to build before everything went horribly wrong. Um, so what this does, it's basically a bunch of JavaScript controls and then a Chromos player. Uh, and this is up on code.google.com if you guys want to pull it up and look at it. It's uh, fairly simple to, to pick apart and the code is, I kept the code probably about as simple as I could. Um, for all the controls. So I have a video ID in here that I just have in here, and I can hit load video. And you can see the player has now changed state to state three, which means that the video is buffering. And it looks like we have a couple bytes that are loading. And it should play the video. We are having more video loading problems. Well, let's try queue video. All right, so I can queue a video by ID, and you'll see it just loads the thumbnail of the video uh, and puts the play button up here, so you can just click in here and start playing the video. If it works, there it goes. That Hi, works. everyone. My name is Steve Chen. I'm one of the uh, co-founders right. of you. So we have mute and unmute right. controls here. Uh, I can also set the volume. There's a really cool guy right there on the video. 
Um, let's try load video again. So now if we try load video, okay, so that one actually worked. Now like if I go to YouTube, let me grab another video. Um, let's pick a really good one here. We'll do, uh, no, I will not rickroll you. I, <laughs> I've, I've done that enough. Oh, this is a good one. All right, so I'll take this video ID, I'll just drop it in the box here and hit load. And then I'll load the video. What are you dealing with? Unmute it. Oh, really? I know exactly all we're dealing with. We want to, like, seek um, ahead. <laughs> you better watch out, you don't really know. Oh, that didn't want to work. There it goes. All right, so another cool option with this uh, is that I can actually tell the video to start whenever I want. So let's say I really like what happens at 45 seconds in. Uh, I can actually put 45 seconds as my start time when I call load video by ID and then load a video. And it should start at 45 seconds in. And here's the current time. And it started pretty close to it. Now, uh, sort of a note about seeking with YouTube videos is that when you play flash video, uh, the way that the video works is when you seek around is you're restricted to seeking to a keyframe in the video. Um, so not all YouTube videos have evenly spaced keyframes in them. Sometimes the keyframes can be scattered apart. Uh, in general, we try to keep as many keyframes as we can, like usually maybe around two, every two seconds that we try to put a keyframe. Uh, but some videos, uh, especially some older videos, maybe of like presentations and things, have, can, can have really far apart keyframes. I've seen a couple that are as far apart as like 15 seconds between the keyframes. So when you call seek to, what actually happens is the player looks up uh, in this array of keyframes and it picks the closest keyframe before the time that you specified. So it's guaranteed to play whatever you wanted at that time, but it may also play for a couple of seconds ahead of that uh, before it gets to your content. So that's something to sort of take note about. Uh, we're sort of investigating ways that we can fix that and make it a little bit better for you guys. Um, but it could take a little while. No guarantees, I guess. Um, some other things here is I can get the video URL. So here's like the URL to the video. Uh, I can get the embed code for that video and that'll give me the full embed code so I can take this and put this on any other site and it'll play this video uh, in the normal embedded player. Um, let's see, we did the volume and stuff. Let me show you guys the source to this since we couldn't do the other stuff. And I'll kind of walk through it a little bit. So uh, the basic way that it works is when on YouTube player ready call is called, we get a reference to the player called YT player and that's our JavaScript object that holds it. Um, I also set an interval to update the, it, the, the video info. So here's what the interval does. The update player info gets called every 250 milliseconds, and it's basically just asking the player for all of its relevant information, like how many bytes are loaded, what the current time is, uh, maybe what the volume is in case the user changes the volume uh, by some other way. Uh, you don't have to put all this stuff in here, but you can. Um, 250 milliseconds in my testing was pretty good. Um, you could probably lower that a little bit if you don't need it to be quite as accurate. Um, we call that initially, and then I'm also subscribing to the on state change event. And uh, one little caveat to watch out here for is that uh, Flash Player's external interface call doesn't keep uh, JavaScript function references the way that JavaScript does. So I can't say, add a listener in this Flash Player, and then here's a reference to a JavaScript function to call. I have to actually pass it a string, and then the player has to call that function based on that string. So this on YT Player state change is just uh, set on the page here as this exact string. So that's something to sort of watch out for. Uh, it gets kind of tricky when you have multiple players on the page, but there are ways to work around it. Um, if you look at our uh, API forum on Google Groups, you'll see uh, a couple of methods to get around that. Um, let's look at the other stuff. So here uh, are a few other examples. So we say, here's like a load video by ID call where we pass in the ID and then the start seconds. So you can either pass in, you know, no start seconds or whatever you want. Uh, you can also set a start seconds when you call Q video by ID. So if you call Q video and say Q this video and I want to start it, you know, 30 seconds in, when the user hits play on that thing, it's going to start at 30 seconds, not at the start. Um, then we have all the basic stuff, play, pause, stop, uh, get state. Here's the seek to. In this case, I just made it always do the allow seek ahead on the seeking state. Uh, let's see. I 
think that's pretty much it. There's the rest of the code here, and then there's a bunch of HTML code which shows you how to set up the form stuff, but that's you know, just simple HTML stuff, so I'll leave that up to you guys to investigate. Um, at this point, uh, I'd like to open it up to questions. Um, well, another really quick method, too, is that we added a cross-domain XML to the YouTube GData API servers a little while ago, so you can now load the GData API XML stuff from your Flash apps and your Flex apps and things. Um, all the information here is on this thing here. You can go look at it. Uh, there was also like an API talk yesterday and a code lab, so if you guys went to that, uh, all of those feeds that you loaded into your code lab stuff, you could also load into a Flash app if you wanted to. Um, so go build something. I guess that's it. Uh, if you guys have questions, uh, there's a microphone here and a microphone here, so go to the microphone and ask it. Uh, we have goodies for you if you ask questions, too, so ask lots of questions. I think we have like some flash drives that are left over. They're like one gig YouTube flash drives. They're really cool. So think of a question. Um, and then we also have t-shirts. Go to a mic. All right, go ahead. All right, so the question was, can you seek frame by frame with the left and right? And the answer is not really. Uh, you could sort of fake it if you wanted to call, like if you were at a certain point in the video and you paused it, and then you hit play and then paused it, a half a split second later, that would look like it was jumping ahead by one little frame, and you could totally do that. So you could do like slow motion by setting maybe an interval that like makes it play and then stop and then play and then stop and play and stop. But I don't think you can go backwards. Uh, so that might be tricky. Uh, let's start on the side. Um, can the YouTube player tell you uh, what the keyframes in the video are? Can it tell you the keyframes? No. Well, well, will, will you? Are you able to get that information out of the YouTube API? No. No. It's not exposed at all. Uh, you can sort of interpolate that by calling seek on a time and then looking at the actual time the video player went to. So like if you call seek to and then look at the current time, once it gets to that new location, you could guess that that's a keyframe. But there's no automated way for you to get the keyframes that way. Uh, that's it. Yeah, do you have a plan to allow um, uploading of videos by users through your API? By using which API? Uh, using this API, is there the, a plan? The GData API. Uh, we do want people to be able to do that. Um, I don't know how far off it is, though. I think the only limit right now is, I think when you, uh, the way that the, that the upload works is you have to, like, get this token, and then you pass the token back as, I think, an authorization header mm -hmm. to the server. And up until the last version of the Flash Player, or, or I guess I should say, so Flash Player 9.0.115 doesn't allow you to set the authorization header, and that happens to be probably the most popular version of the Flash Player out there right now. Okay. So uh, the newest version allows you to do that with a special cross-domain file, uh, which I'm not sure if we have set up yet, uh, but we do want people to be able to do that in the near future. So we're sort of evaluating how our uploads work, and then we want to give people a way to do that through Flash. Excellent, thanks. Yeah. Okay. So we we set up a uh, basically a, a flipbook of JPEGs, and we were we're basically uh, encoding geospatially the the county route and post mile on on roads. Okay. And what we would like to do is by frame, you know, you click on a, on a place on uh, Earth, we'd like to fast forward the, the YouTube video to a certain frame. Could you be able to do that with, with a seat? Sure. Uh, I believe you should be able to do that. I really wish I could show you this map demo that I had. Let's see if it'll load up here. Um, so the caveat to that is that you can't store data in the video. Right. Um, so the video would have obviously have to be separate. But if you had, you know, if you had built some sort of maps API algorithm that when you clicked on the map, it would find the closest data point to that click right. and say this data point corresponds to second 13 in the video, you could definitely tell the player to seek to seconds 13. Okay. But it won't, it won't go by frame. So, right. So it wouldn't be exact. Okay. It would go to whichever keyframe is before 13 seconds. Right. Thanks. Or at 13 seconds, depending on how it works. Uh, let's see if this loads by now. Hey, it works. I'll show you guys this. I guess the sound isn't terribly important for this one. Looks like it's a little slow. Hold back this up and let it skew for a second. You want to do a question while we wait? Uh, can we play the video in full screen mode? Can you do full screen mode? Yes, you can. Uh, it's not built into the player, but if you were to load the Chromos player into another Swift and then put a full screen button in that Swift that then resizes the Chromos player, 
it works. Um, the JW FLV player that I wanted to show a demo of, but it didn't work, actually has a full screen button. Um, of course, I don't have the link here. Let me, uh, let, me, let me pull this up again since the connection seems to be working again and we'll see. All right, so here's the player that uses the Chromos player. Hey, all right. So this one has a full screen button here, and it lets you go full screen using the music video. And it's an awesome song, by the way, too. Question over here. Uh, do you know the interval at which you basically fire off the events back to JavaScript in terms of the current song position and whatnot? Uh, there isn't one. You have to pull the player in order to get that data. Oh, OK. You've, okay. The, the only thing that the player broadcasts out is state change events, so like when they play or pause the player, or when there's an error. Gotcha. So okay. if you want the current time, you have to set up a polling thing. I, about every 250 milliseconds usually works pretty well. Uh, if you really need more than that, I guess you can, but it's probably a waste, I guess. OK. Are all the functions supported in JavaScript support, supporting ActionScript? Yes, except for, actually, yes, they all are. They are all supported? Yeah. OK. I think, yes. <laughs> yeah, make sure you guys get your thumb drives and stuff if you came in. Uh, also, does the skinless player um, respond to keyboard commands? The Chromos player, yes. Okay. So I should cover that too. These all support keyboard commands. Um, uh, the spacebar plays and pauses. I don't know if this player actually does it. Uh, you can disable the keyboard <laughs> shortcuts. That's a good frame to stop on. Uh, so, so yeah, it has all the basic ones that the embedded player has, like left and right. Uh, so, so right now, the right arrow key jumps ahead 10%, and the left arrow key jumps back to zero. But I was thinking about changing that to just jump back 10% instead, because I think a lot of people think that's a little bit more, uh, makes a little bit more sense. And then the up and down arrow keys do the volume up and down, uh, space bar plays and pauses, and I think that's all we have right now. And is it possible to assign new ones um, through the API? Or? No, uh, but you could load, I mean, you could listen via JavaScript for key commands and then do stuff, or you could do it in another Flash app. Like if you load the player into your Flash app, you could listen for keyboard events and then override the ones that are in the player if you wanted to. Mm. Um, there is a command to disable the keyboard shortcuts, so you could set your own if you wanted to. Cool, thanks. Okay. Is there a way to resize the video at a certain point in it, or has it uh, Yeah, so there's the set size call, which is basically what happens when you go to full screen here. It's basically just calling set size and setting it to the full size of the screen. Okay. So, I don't know. I mean, if you look it up, it, it's listed on the uh, on the API page. It lists all the different API calls. Okay, thanks. Uh, and it works for the embedded player too, with the controls. The controls will resize and everything. Yeah. Well, uh, is it possible to alter the parameters such that the thumbnail frame is different? As in what time in the video I want the thumbnail frame to be? Uh, you you want to like customize which thumbnail shows? As in, yeah, what what frame in the video does the th thumbnail actually show? You mean like when you queue a video? Like if I was to, like if I reload this? So oh, if, I guess if, this is it. if I have a repository of videos which, are, which I'm all getting from, the, from YouTube, is it possible for me to alter the frame which YouTube is showing? But no, I don't want to show that. I want to show the start of the video. No, so. no. So it's we get three thumbnails for each video. There's, I think currently it's one at 25%, 50%, and 75%, yeah. and then uh, by default, I think it's 50%, but the user can change that. So look, when I upload a video, I can change and pick which th of the three thumbnails I want to show up. So when the player loads the thumbnail, it loads whichever player the uploader, cho it loads whichever thumbnail the uploader chose. So w you could, in theory, load whichever thumbnail you wanted to and bypass the, th the player's built-in thumbnail loader, uh, you know, and show it over it, I suppose you could do it that way. Um, but we don't really want you to because the user obviously picks that thumbnail because that's the thumbnail they want to use. But it's still 25, 50, and 75. I can't go for it at the start of the right. video. Right, you can't choose which frame you want to pick. Yeah. Is it possible to have things like triggers based on where the timeline is? So you could have something like a lower third pop up or maybe have like a tag associated with the specific point uh, on the timeline? You can. The terminal service doesn't allow you to put things over the video. Okay. Um, 
and that's just so that if we ever put anything over the video, it won't collide with it. Uh, here's an example of sort of synchronizing the video with something. So what happens here is uh, I have a, a, a checker that checks the current time of the video, and then it synchronizes the video with the map. So in this case, I just plotted out some points on this map, and as the guy goes down the hill, the map sort of follows him uh, based on his location, and it's not exact. You know, I just picked the spots, but you can see it sort of working. Am I allowed to put something over the timeline? Uh, you mean the controls? Yeah. Um, like if I wanted to, if I wanted like a little, like, like a tag kind of to pop up underneath the video, maybe as it's playing to mark a certain point on the video. I don't know. You know, it, it, that's kind of up to your interpretation of the terms of service. If you build your own controls with the Chromos player, then absolutely. Uh, you know, because they're your controls. I think if you wanted to put something over the actual controls of the embedded player, then like it might be construed as like it's a YouTube official feature. So, gotcha. but I don't know. I mean, it's questionable. Like, again, like if you built your own controls that look just like YouTube controls, then maybe it would be okay. Like, yeah, because it's, it's kind like of a gray area. It's like right? Viddler, something like that, where they have like points in the video with better tags right. and they, they pop up something. I'd say if you wanted to be safe, just build your own controls with the Chrome player and do it that way. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Sure. We were wondering when you're going to take care of that mullet, Jeff. Uh, I have a haircut appointment tonight, actually, to get it cut. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, one of the benefits of a nonprofit account is that you had control over the YouTube logo. In the when your account is overloaded as a nonprofit, like special Google. Well, partner. so so on the actual site, we don't show the YouTube watermark on the site but I think the watermark always shows on the embedded players. So my question was going to be, would there be any benefits for nonprofits to be able to dynamically control which watermark might appear? You don't, you don't currently, but I think that's a good feature request. Okay. Um, so maybe we can track that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, my question is, are you, at the very end of it, besides, I guess, just a replay, are we able to control, like, for instance, what other videos they would, would, they would we could recommend they would watch, like, for tags? Or you mean like what shows up down here? What normally? shows up down there? Like if we can give them like another playlist to. Sure. So you can. Uh, in the normal embedded players case, you can't. So it's always going to be either the related videos or nothing. Uh, you can, however, create a custom player if you go to YouTube uh, in your account. Oh, site maintenance. That's great. Maybe that's why the players' the videos weren't playing. Uh, so if you go to custom player in your account, you can actually choose, and we have this big version and the small version, uh, and you can actually choose a playlist to show up in that player. So if you use the small version, uh, and let's say I want to use like my internet people playlist, uh, and then generate the code. Uh, well, so it, the site looks like it's in maintenance mode right now for some reason, but uh, normally that would create a player, and I could embed that on my site, and it would have all of the videos in my playlist would be in the player, and that's it. Okay. So yes, you can sort of do that. Uh, with the Chromos player, you could obviously build your own playlist if you wanted to and do it that way. Okay. So you have a couple options, I guess. Yeah. Hi, my question is kind of similar to the gentleman that went uh, before that guy, but it has to do with the watermark, I guess. Uh, <coughs> I'm not sure if with nonprofits if you could remove it or not, but also would you be able to move it to different corners of the video player, or is there different options maybe in the future for uh, different style logos of YouTube? Being in um, the um, there's definitely not right now, and I have no idea in the future. That would be, I mean, uh, we have a way to track feature requests through the code.google.com site. Uh, Stephanie is here somewhere. She could tell you where to put it. She's in the back there. Okay. So, so you could log a feature request that way. Um, I don't think we have any different styles of watermark, so I would probably guess that wouldn't happen, but maybe moving it to a different corner would be possible. And then also maybe something that's not static, maybe something at the beginning and something at the end to where during the middle of the video displays, or I don't know if that's feasible. I, I don't know, maybe. Depends on the product managers, I guess. All right, thank you. All right, uh, next. Hi, are there plans to um, open up this Chromos player for videos hosted on Google Video? I'm sorry, say that again? Are there plans to open up this Chromos Player API for uh, videos hosted on Google Video? Uh, I don't think so. Um, not that I know of. I think Google Video is kind of, you know, going out the door, I guess. I mean, it's still around, obviously, but I don't think that adding new features to it is in the plan. Thanks. So under what circumstances do you need to use an API key? Is it only for the Chromos Player? Uh, yeah, so the embedded player you can use without an API key. Uh, the only thing you need the key for is to actually load the Chromos player. 
and that just goes as part of the URL. So if somebody wants to steal that key, then <coughs> how do you protect it? Right. So there's no protection on the key. Right. We actually might take it away soon. We're, 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 we're evaluating its effectiveness, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Hi. Well, i never seen uh, anything related to subtitles. So there's something, uh, there's a way from the API or whatever to add the subtitles to the videos on YouTube. To uh, say that again? I didn't quite hear you. Subtitles. You want to add subtitles? Yeah, exactly. Um, so there's no current way to do that. Um, there's, I guess you could, you, I mean, uh, so technically putting something over the video would be a terms of service violation. So I would say that it's oh, okay. not really possible, but you could say put some subtitles under the player or next yeah, to exactly. it maybe. Under the player. You could, yeah, you could do that. There's a, uh, there's support for that now? Is there support for it? For um, well, sure. I mean, using using the JavaScript or the Flash API, and you want, if you wanted to put some text like above or below or next to the player, oh, okay. you you could watch the time of the video and then display a specific caption or whatever you want next to the player, okay. depending on the time of the video. So yes, you could do that now. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. As a user, one of the frustrations I have with the the slider bar is that variable length clips have unpredictable lengths for a given percentage. In other words, you can get to the middle of it pretty much, but you, you may want to go back five seconds, and it's a little hard to do on an hour-long clip. Right. I, is there any uh, plan? And I know you, I think, if I understand correctly, we can hard code that in there by calling specific times or something. But is there any thought to putting that into the, uh, maybe perhaps the secondary slider bar with a fixed length that, that is centered on the current time that you could just go back a certain amount. And, uh, and there's no plans for that right now. You mean like on the YouTube site itself? Or, or, or on the Chrome version, yeah. Well, I mean, you could, if you have ideas for the, for the, for the thing, I mean, you could certainly build that yourself okay. using, you know, the Chromos player or even using the embedded player. You could actually add a secondary seek bar if you wanted to underneath, like, an embedded player. Oh, cool. Uh, and that's totally possible. Cool. Yeah. Can you control the Chromos player from ActionScript 3, or is it strictly... 2.0. So the players are all built in ActionScript 2, um, so there's no native support for ActionScript 3, but you can write a wrapper for it. So if you're familiar with sort of ActionScript 2 to ActionScript 3 communication, uh, there, I guess there's no direct communication, but you can use things like local connection or external interface to call out of your video and then call back into the Chromos player or the, or the embedded player. So uh, I think the guys at Gaia Online have an AS3 app that loads the Chromos player and controls it. Um, at least I think it's AS3, that's what I've heard. Um, uh, but other than that, there's no. I mean, eventually we'll have AS3 support, but it's, you know, further down the road. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Can you change the aspect ratio of a video? No. Like down to letterbox? No. You can set the size. So right now, the embedded player will always maintain a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Um, the Chromos player right now, as it stands, doesn't maintain the aspect ratio of the video, so I guess you could set the size, but we're going to push out an update very soon that will make it so that you can set the size of the viewport to whatever you want, and the video will just maintain its aspect within that and stretch to as big as it can. So the video is always going to maintain its, its, its aspect ratio that the uploader set. So if they uploaded it wrong, it's stuck that way, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, this is a more question about YouTube itself. Um, do you guys ever, are you guys ever going to implement the batch remove like, if I have a lot of videos on my YouTube account, I have to remove them one by one. I can't, like, select all of them and remove them. And I don't know. That would, that, that would be a good thing to submit to this, to the feature request thing. Okay. Thanks. Right. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. So you, you could write an API app that is like a mass delete function where you could just go and delete all your YouTube videos. My question is about the quality. Uh, we okay. have some uh, uh, featured content, so, uh, but we don't have a resource to stream it on, on our own streaming server. It's considered to use the YouTube as a streaming. The uh, question was about quality, about though? quality. So we, the, the quality is pretty low right now, so it's not uh, acceptable for the service. Do you have a plan in the future? To so, so we do have higher quality videos on the YouTube site already right now. You might have seen them if you look at various videos. They might have a high quality option on them. Um, we don't have that option in the embedded players yet, um, so we're kind of letting the feature on the main site settle in and get solid, and then we'll add it to the embedded players Okay. Cool. at some point down the road. So I don't think there's any solid plans yet for that. Thanks. Yeah. 
Can you control the uh, the Chromeless player from another Flash movie? Uh, not directly, um, but you could say embed the Chromeless player in another Swift that has a local connection bridge in it, and then load another Swift that also has local connection, and then talk between the two. Okay. So you could do it that way. Yeah. Thank you. Hmm? Would you be able to do rounded corners in the Chromeless player? Make like a 50s style looking television. Do you want to actually cut the video off? That was, I was well, wondering if you would overlay or if the video plays basically on top of whatever. Right. You're so it's kind of a gray area, right? Because the, t the term of service says don't overlay anything over the video. But I see. if it's only the corners, I mean, I don't know. Okay. Depends on how angry our lawyers are, I guess, at that time. Right? <laughs> uh, any more questions? Um, I heard of a site that was actually overlaying stuff over your videos and. What is does that violating your terms of agreement, or is that if you're overlaying things? I well, guess there's I mean another site out there. Um, I can't remember its name right now. Um, I heard it on a podcast once, and it was overlaying pop like pop video type stuff over it. And I was wondering. Oh yeah, I think I've seen that. W w did that ever? Did anything ever happen? Uh, I haven't heard anything since. <laughs> I actually don't know. Okay. I don't. I mean, I I'm not that aware with it. I think I saw did see that site like a few months ago, but I don't know whatever happened to it, so I don't know. Yeah. So this is like a term of service kind of a question. Can we add a preloader so we can run some kind of commercial on the, on the chrono, chrono thing, and then, and then play the, and then pull in the, the YouTube video, or not? You want to like play like a pre-roll video or yes. something? Um, I actually don't know that one. Okay. That would be like a lawyer question, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think this guy was first. Go ahead. Um, is there any way to retrieve information related to video, like uh, username who uploaded the video, or comments and description of the video? Any way to retrieve that kind of information? Uh, say, say that again. I didn't quite get it. Um, is there any way to retrieve information related to your video, like comments, people? Can you retrieve video? comments from videos? Yeah. So yes, you can use the GData API to get comments that have been placed on certain videos. And like username, the user who uploaded. Yeah, video yeah. So you can you can get all you can even have users log in as themselves on your own site and then you know get their comments, let them add new comments, let them upload videos, things like that. Okay. I mean, I mean comments people left uh, on YouTube. Yeah, you can load those. Okay. Cool. Using the GData API. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So I can. Q to a certain point in a video, and it'll seek back to the prior keyframe, right? And those are not usually spaced more than like 10 seconds apart at the worst. Yeah, it, at, I would say average from what I've seen is usually around two seconds apart. Okay. Um, the maximum that I've seen, I think, has been about 15 seconds. Okay. And it's usually on you know shorter videos that are really old, um, and just haven't been you know reencoded to be fixed yet, I guess. Um, and so if I was looking to just take a snippet of a video and then play another video after that, would the best way to be to queue it up to a certain, to start it out queued to a certain point and then to use JavaScript to wait, to have a listener and wait until it got to X seconds after? Or is there an actually like an end at kind of method? What, what exactly do you want to do with it though, I guess? You so just to, play, just to play from seconds 35 to 70. Yeah, you can do that. Video. So you could say start at 35 using the start seconds and then when it gets to a certain seconds, you could tell it to stop. Would you, okay, um, and then the next question would be, so there's nothing with the Chromeless player for playlists inherently, right? Right. So that, that would be something that I would just wait for the player. Right, so you'd use the GData API to load, you know, playlist or video stuff and then just pass the ID to the Chromeless player to play them one at a time. And I can't load non-YouTube videos in the Chromeless player, per Correct. Se, right? But if you use something like that JW FLV player, that can play, I think, videos from a number of different services, so you might use that one and then you'd be all set. Okay, and my last question would be about that JW player. Um, how does that work seeing as you need a developer API key? I think he just has a place where you put your API key in. Okay, great, thanks. Last question it looks like. Have you guys um, thought at all about adding play rate support to the API? Say, say that again? About adding play rate support so you can play back at half speed or double speed. Like that. Oh, play speed? Well, it's difficult to do in Flash, right? So uh, it's something that you could try to build in the Chromeless player. Um, but, like, you know, half speed is not true half speed, right? Because you're basically just telling the player to, you know, play for a second and then stop and then play for a second and then stop. Um, so I think it's more of a limitation of Flash video than Flash. YouTube okay. or stuff. 
All right. Well, I think we're uh, done with questions. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Uh, I hope you had a good time at the Google I.O. thing. I'm sorry my internet was broken. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>